So let me call upon uh, Dr. Prudhvi Raj Karumuri, who will be talking to us about uh, uh, the paper Comparison of Phrase Procedure with Combined Phrase and Intraoperative Celiac Plexus Neurolysis for Pain Management in Chronic Pancreatitis. Dr. Prudhvi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Prudhvi Raj from uh, Sri Venkateswar Institute of Medical Sciences. And today I'm going to speak on uh, comparison of phrase procedure with combined phrase and intraoperative celiac plexus neurolysis for pain management in chronic pancreatitis. So abdominal pain is the most worrisome feature of chronic pancreatitis. Debilitating pain is the most common indication for surgery. Phrase procedure provides pain relief in about 80 to 90 percent of the patients, classically. Pathophysiology of pain in uh, chronic pancreatitis is not completely understood. And uh, perineural inflammation, one of the mechanisms of pain in CP, is not addressed by surgical procedures. Celiac plexus neurolysis, or block, abolishes the visceral afferent sympathetic fibers that pass through the celiac plexus and ganglion. So the celiac plexus neurolysis is the destruction of uh, celiac plexus by agents like uh, absolute alcohol. Pain relief lasts much longer in neurolysis uh, than with uh, block. CPN is an established modality for palliation of pain in uh, pancreatic malignancies. Block has been used in CP, but the role of CPN has not been studied well. So our study is aimed at evaluating the role of CPN as an additive to phrase procedure to provide durable pain relief in uh, chronic pancreatitis. So the aim, is, as I said, is to compare phrase procedure with uh, combined phrase and intraoperative celiac plexus neurolysis in terms of pain management in chronic pancreatitis. So the objectives were to assess preoperative pain scores, to measure postoperative pain scores at discharge one and third months, to measure uh, postoperative quality of life at three months. It's a single center prospective randomized study, and uh, we included 23 patients with chronic pancreatitis in the study between the, uh, June 2021 to May 2022. Approval from the Institutional Research and Ethics Committee was obtained. Informed written consent was taken from each patient who participated in the study. All patients undergoing phase procedure for chronic pancreatitis aged between 10 to 80 years were included in our study, and uh, those patients who had a previous abdominal surgery or when additional procedures like gastrojejunostomy or hepaticojejunostomy were needed, these patients were excluded. So demographic data including name, age, sex, BMI were noted, uh, complaints, etiology, presence of comorbidities were noted, preoperative HVQ pain score was recorded, imaging features on ultrasound, CE, CT, and or MRI as available were noted. Patients were then randomized to either phrase procedure, group F alone, or uh, phrase procedure along with celiac plexus neurolysis, the group C, based on blocks of four method with one is to one allocation. During surgery, standard procedure of pancreatic dissection and opening of the main pancreatic duct were done for all patients. Neurolysis was performed using 20 ml absolute alcohol diluted to 40 ml with sterile distilled water, which was injected uh, using 22 gauze spinal needle, one off onto the either side of the celiac plexus. Postoperative pain management was done using multimodal analgesia, IV oral or epidural, as per the WHO pain ladder. So this image shows uh, the celiac plexus neurolysis. The ethanol is injected to the celiac plexus. Postoperatively, pain scores were assessed at discharge one and three months using the HVQ pain score, which consists of uh, frequency of pain attacks, visual analog score, analgesic medication used by the patient, duration of the disease-related inability to work. So quality of life assessment was done at the third month postoperatively using the SF12 questionnaire. And statistical analysis, uh, categorical variables were reported as percentages. Quantitative variables uh, with normal distribution were summarized with mean plus or minus standard deviation. Other variables were uh, summarized as median plus interquartile range. Uni univariate analysis was carried out to compare each PQ pain score between the two groups using uh, unpaid T's test for uh, normally distributed variables. Man with new test for uh, variables that were not normally distributed chi-square and Fisher's exact test for categorical variables. A p-value of uh, less than 0.05 was considered statistically significant. There were a total of 23 patients included in the study, out of which uh, 12 were randomized to the phrase group alone, and 11 were randomized to the celiac plexus neurolysis with the uh, phrase group, group C. Uh, this uh, slide shows the gender distribution, group F containing uh, six, uh, six males and six females, group C containing nine males and two figures, and there was no statistical difference in the age distribution. Mean group of uh, patients in group F was uh, 41 years. Mean age uh, in group C was 38. There was no statistical difference. Uh, BMI also was comparable in both the groups. Both groups were comparable in terms of uh, hematological and biochemical parameters. The characteristics of the pancreas gland uh, at surgery were similar in the two groups, with duct size being 0.9 in the group F and duct size being 1.08 in the group C. There was no statistical difference between the two groups. 
HVQ pain score showed no statistical difference in both the groups, uh, both preoperatively and postoperatively. Uh, the quality of life assessment as evaluated with SFL questionnaire showed no significant difference in either the physical or mental competence scores, with both faring almost equally. So neurogenic cause of pain in uh, chronic pancreatitis is an important facet that needs attention of the surgeon treating chronic pancreatitis. Uh, the effectiveness of uh, neurolysis for CP studied sparingly in existent literature. However, uh, literature shows that uh, neurolysis can in fact be a uh, valuable tool in the surgical armamentarium. Bradley et al. in this study have concluded that uh, surgical splanchnectomy is effective for curing pain in chronic pancreatitis, more so in the small duct disease. Besinsky et al. have proven that uh, celiac plexus block is as good as splanchnectomy for pain relief. Most studies of celiac plexus block used either bupivacaine or triamcinoline, which provides temporary relief for three to four months. Very few studies have used neurolytic agents such as alcohol, in uh, and those two were used in uh, advanced malignancies. And even these studies had a short follow-up. Satyamurthy et al. have uh, concluded in this study that uh, operative neurolytic celiac plexus blockade was more effective as the diffusion of drug is better due to direct injection in all four quadrants in a controlled manner. Uh, quoting them, the overall improvement in HPK score was 86% in the uh, neurolytic group compared to the 58% placebo group. So intraoperative neurolysis is beneficial because it can be performed by the surgeon himself or herself, does not require additional equipment, no added cost. But CPN can be complicated by hypotension and diarrhea, which can be managed conservatively and supportively uh, with supportive treatment. Uh, adding neurolytic uh, block to the face utilizes the best of both modalities with little to no extra ad added cost. However, in our study, we were unable to prove the superiority of combining uh, neurolytic celiac plexus blockade with phase procedure. This could be due to our uh, small sample size, short follow-up period, or due to the lack of understanding of mechanism of pain in our patients. So to conclude, our study uh, showed, uh, is, uh, showed, I mean, sorry, our study concluded that uh, the addition of CPN to phase procedure is not superior compared to phase procedure alone for ma pain management in patients with chronic pancreatitis. This is my references. Thank you. Um, the, you started off with a good objective, uh, but uh, my question to you is uh, how did you uh, assess the sample size and why did you end up with such a poor sample size? Uh, sir, uh, the sample size were uh, way more than what we did, but uh, the problem is we started the uh, uh, study during uh, COVID period, so the enrollment was a little less. The second question was that uh, we all know from the other experience of percutaneous uh, celiac plexus block for certain patients who have refractory pain, we know that it's not a long-lasting solution. Yes. And you may have good early results, but it's not going to last long. And surgery is the one which gives rise to the lasting pain relief. And Assessment at three months, I don't think, is not going to give you an answer for such a thing. Yes. Uh, so that's what we were trying to see, if there is any difference between uh, the previous literature and our literature, I mean, our uh, study, whether we can see that uh, there's any significant improvement. Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, is it an analyzable data? Because we are just uh, dealing with 12 patients in one arm. Another 13 patients. So most of the variable, if you end up, they are uh, landing in single digits. So most of the formulas you have mentioned in methodology simply do not apply in this context at all. So what is your comment on I that? I don't get you. Can you repeat the question? No. This is a very small set of patients. So most of the formulas you told are not simply applicable to this situation at all. Uh, we have made sure that uh, we use those uh, statistical tests that are applicable to that. Yeah, Dr. Sanjay. So, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations for presenting a negative study. But, uh, uh, you know, one of the things is uh, when you inject alcohol intraoperatively, I'm not sure how, how you have so confident that you're injecting in the celiac plexus. It's a very tricky area, very blind and you can have problems. So I'm not sure how your ethics committee passes such uh, studies in a randomized fashion for treatment which uh, largely, largely has been given up, which is crude, which is not, which has potential complications. And on top of that, you are, as he said, comparing very small data. So in an effort to do randomization, uh, you know, you're violating several other principles. So I'm not sure how, you, how ethics committees are passing such studies. 
sir, uh, a ciliate plexus neurolysis per se might have been crude uh, because uh, we are not doing it under direct vision. Here we are uh, dissecting the space and we are doing it under direct vision. Uh, so I think uh, the drug delivery will be more better than the all other modalities that have already been used, sir. Dr. Yeah, and regarding yeah. the sample size, I think, uh, as I told, it was uh, COVID to your time, so. Yeah, yes, as you, Dr. Khandelwal from Patna, as you rightly said that 80% of patients are pain relieved after just phrase procedure. So for 20% patients unnecessarily giving uh, ethanol at that time, what is the problem if we, if those patients, 20% plus any other patients come with the pain later on and then fantastic ways of EUS guided um, alcohol injection or percutaneous imaging guide, guided uh, CPN is possible. So what is the harm in this way of treating the patient? Okay. Praise, wait for the pain. If the pain comes, then you go for the CPN. Yes, sir, I do get that. Sir. Uh, the strata of patients that we we'll, that we get routinely are not so, uh, I mean, uh, able to get the in U.S. guided uh, procedure, sir. And uh, what we are tr we are trying to do is uh, we'll get the I mean, we'll combine everything. I mean, the surgery part, and we'll also give them the added advantage of uh, neurolysis so that uh, the pain relief can be durable, and uh, the initial part of the uh, in post op also goes well. In addition to all the other issues mentioned, the question simply was sequential rather than concurrent treatment because you don't know which is working in the end. Even from a clinical point of view, it is difficult to judge. That's why it was raised. Uh, Dr. Prakash? Yeah, I would like to know what was the historical pain relief after uh, phrase procedure and how much percentage of improvement you were aiming at by doing this intervention. And second is that if you do an alcohol injection intraoperatively, you may uh, mask the symptoms like development of malignancy or some complications in the future. So is it correct to do uh, in, a, uh, in a patient who has otherwise close to 80% pain relief after a standard phrase procedure? Sir, our, uh, I mean like, uh, our idea was to provide pain relief in uh, chronic pancreatitis rather than uh, what could happen. I mean like, could happen, a malignancy could arise. But our main concern in chronic pancreatitis per se is patients has to get pain relief. That is what we are concentrating on. Even so the what, what, what was the your point pain that relief you have historically, made, retrospectively with phrase procedure, what was your units pain relief? After 80, such a 85 to 90 percent of the patients get pain relief, but the other 20, uh, 10 to 20 percent, the patients still get pain. Final question from Dr. Rajesh Gupta. Uh, this was a nice study. Only thing, the, the numbers were small, but there are a few questions. Now the pain in chronic pancreatitis, which you are trying to address by these procedures, there are other factors associated with this, like the duration of this pain, the ERCP done before, the number of stent, time this stent was exchanged, and you know whether these patients were on pregabalin before or not. Yes. So these factors, I think Biju also pointed out to the same thing. Did you factor in these things when you compared these uh, subgroups? I would say no, sir, but... Uh we had uh, literally, I mean. Uh, so why was SF12, the second question is, why was SF12 chosen for quality of life? So SF12 was purely chosen because uh, the burden of questions is lesser. Compared to SF36, we could get it easily. Anyway, SF36 is also uh, not the question. Thank you. We need to wind up. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you.